Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing, TSMC stock, had a great day after the company received some nice amounts of money from the United States. On today's episode, I want to do the following. First, I want to take a closer look at TSMC and how much money it's getting from the United States in the U.S. Chips Act. Second, I want to take a closer look at other semiconductor companies that are also benefiting from this act. Third, I want to take a quick look at valuation and my overall thoughts on who can benefit from this money the most. So let's take a closer look in today's episode. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video and check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. Before we take a closer look at the funding for this company and other companies, for those that are not familiar, the United States has an incentive to bring chip manufacturing back into the United States. And this kind of incentives are mainly in three different ways. First is a form of direct funding, which pretty much the company doesn't have to pay back. Second, is some form of loans these loans tend to be at a better rate and lower cost than anything in the market out there and third some form of tax credit incentives so right now if we take a closer look at tsmc tsmc was proposed about 6.6 billion dollars in chip direct funding so this is pretty much money they don't have to get back if they meet all the requirements that they're kind of saying they're gonna do outside of this tsmc also announced a third fab that they're gonna build here in arizona so tsmc is expected to build about uh, is expected to spend about 65 billion dollars in three leading edge fabs in phoenix arizona to build the world's most advanced semiconductor um, solutions here in-house so the three fabs are each going to do different types of semiconductor solution the first fab will produce four nanometer process technology the second fab will produce the world's most advanced two nanometer technology in addition to the previously announced plans to produce three nanometer technology as well and the tsmc's third fab that they just recently announced will produce two nanometer or below uh so overall it, it depends on kind of customer demand if they need maybe more three nanometer if they need two nanometers if they need something below that this is where the third fab is going to go so they do mention that arizona that this tsmc arizona expects to begin high volume production in the first fab by the first half of 2025 so about a year from now so we can see that this is going to be great news and tsmc obviously the king of semiconductor manufacturing building these three advanced chips is going to be pretty great for the overall um semiconductor solution but obviously for united states as well before we go any further i just want to say thank you all for the amazing support we are getting in this channel we're closing in to 40,000 subs that is insane so if you haven't and you are enjoying the content make sure to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button finally if you want to support this channel a little bit more check out my special offer at fool.com slash jose now back to today's episode so they did get the 6.6 billion like i mentioned in direct funding but they also could make about five billion dollars in proposed loan and outside of that they can claim up to 25 percent tax credit on qualified capital expenditure and i think those are going to be the best the biggest winners of this chip act right because if you're going to get some form of tax credit on capital expenditure which is pretty much equipment um to some extent your the companies are going to make sure to use this money to buy as much capital uh, to buy as much equipment as possible so i personally see the ones that are going to make the best buck and the most buck out of these are going to be semiconductor equipment companies and if you have been watching this channel this is something that we have discussed numerous numerous times but just want to re reiterate to maybe those that are our new viewers to the channel now, some other things that we did learn from TSMC, they kind of had their own press release. The company still remains um, committed to their long-term financial goals, which are 15 to 20% revenue compounded annual growth rate within the next few years, and also a 53% and higher gross margin. And this is something that a lot of TSMC investors might have been worried about, right? Because right now, TSMC mainly manufactures in Taiwan, which has low manufacturing costs compared to here in the United States. 
United States. So a lot of investors are wondering if TSMC expanding into a country like United States, where cost is a lot higher, will it impact margins? TSMC believes that that's not going to be the case. Most likely, they're just going to give a lot of the upfront cost to some of the to their customers when it comes to building in the America fat plants in general, and also probably because of all these incentives the United States is giving TSMC. Now, the second point I wanted to do is just take a closer look at some of the other companies that are uh, that are benefiting right now from the Chips Act. Uh, the second one is going to be Intel. I think this was on late uh, February, so no, on March twentieth, so uh, a few weeks ago, the Chips Act uh, gave about eight point five billion dollars in potential direct funding to Intel. Intel does get a lot more money for a few reasons. It is a chips a U.S. company. I don't think that's the main reason, but. Um, Intel is investing a lot more money in the United States. They're expecting to invest more than $100 billion in four different states, Arizona, New Mexico, Ohio, and Oregon, 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 Oregon people to let me know which one's right. But for those that are not familiar, the they do kind of give us insight of the different plants. The Arizona is building two new leading fab plants, and they are updating one, which is going to focus a lot on high volume of domestic production of Intel 18A and some other advanced chips. In New Mexico, they're focusing on expanding or modernizing two fabs in forms of, of advanced packaging. Advanced packaging is what we're seeing a lot right now where you need to be able to do kind of 2D stacking, 3D stacking, or put these chips together to make a better chip. And that's what we're seeing in a lot of AI chips and a lot of advanced chips as well. We have the Ohio plant where they are constructing two new leading edge fabs and then in oregon this is where they do a lot of their research and development is where the company has their first high na euv lithography equipment machine that no one else has i think intel is the first to have it and they're going to be the first to have it for a while uh so intel is definitely making some strong investments here in the united states very good because it is a uh, u.s based company uh so 8.5 billion dollar for them in in direct funding and up to 11 billion in loans and we do see that they also qualify for that 25 percent tax credit on capital expenditure now the third company is going to be global foundry so this is also a semiconductor manufacturing company but they focus more on mature nodes I think Global Foundries was the first to receive funding from the CHIPS Act, and this came out in mid-February, where they got roughly $1.5 billion in potential funding. Um, they do create like more of those chips for advanced uh, that go on things like vehicles, that go on smartphones, a lot of advanced, I'm not advanced, mature node solutions. So in forms of this, uh, Global Foundries is actually updating a few plants in New York, Malta, New York, and also in Vermont. Uh, so they are kind of increasing their capacity for their automotive solutions. They're improving some of the, uh, their, their chips, uh, their fabs to deal with large scale 300 millimeter um, fab facilities as well. And then in their Vermont, they're focusing on things like gallium nitride and silicon, which is used in EV, in power grids, and also the electrification of a lot of solutions. Now, outside of just chip manufacturing, um, we did see that on February 28th, the Chips Act also came out with notice of funding opportunities where it just goes out and says, hey, look, if there's any companies that are focusing on advanced packaging in substrates and substrates, materials feel free we did open up about 300 million dollars in funding innovation here uh, so we can see the united states is not just focusing on manufacturing but also on things like advanced packaging now the final company i want to take a closer look at just recently came out um, with this headline and it doesn't have to do with the chips act individual states here in the united states also have kind of their own funding as well and a supplier of memory sk hynix plans to invest roughly 3.8 3.9 billion dollars in United States chip facility uh, and it does seem like the state I forget what state they are in I, I'm pretty sure it's Arizona so the next company didn't really this get uh, actual credit from the U.S. Chips Act but it did get a credit from a state funding um, so SK Hynix will receive almost 700 million dollars in incentives from the state of Indiana to kind of establish a semiconductor manufacturing facility there so they're also probably going to get some form of Chips Act and for those that are not familiar with SK Hynix they are the producers of HBM memory that obviously NVIDIA uses uh, so this is going to bolt well you're going to have kind of your memory companies your advanced packaging companies your manufacturing 
manufacturing companies and obviously your U.S. chip uh, chips, your U.S. design companies here in house. Uh, so definitely a bright future right now for the United States and the semiconductor industry, in my opinion. Now I wanted to take a closer look at P/E ratios for the three main manufacturing companies that we talked about today: Taiwan, Intel, and Global Foundries. I really want to look at maybe forward one year to see where these are expected to go. We can see TSM is sitting at 18.3, Intel sitting at 16.4, Global sitting at roughly 23.29. In all honesty, there's one reason I wouldn't invest in TSM. I think TSM pretty much just moves with the semiconductor space. So I would rather invest in a, ET, in a semiconductor market ETF opposed to investing in TSM. I'm not saying TSM is a bad investment. I just believe it's not going to be a complete market beater. Intel has a higher risk and higher reward. So if there is a market beating opportunity, I think Intel might be there. Global Foundries, I think, would be somewhere between TSM and Intel, in my opinion. Definitely has a potential of, of beating the market, but more than likely, is most likely going to just perform like a semiconductor ETF. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Take care, have a good day, and see you next time.